Hi everybody, Levi Clay here, and today I've got something a little bit different for you. Today I'm going to be testing your ears as a way of settling a bit of an argument that I had yesterday. You see, I've recently purchased a True Temperament guitar. This uh, guitar up here, my Mayonnaise Regis Forever, has a True Temperament neck on it, which is those wobbly frets. And in theory, that should make everything you play on the instrument perfectly in tune. Somebody asked me last night, but can you really hear the difference? Can the average person hear the difference between a guitar that has a true temperament neck and a guitar that doesn't have a true temperament neck? I'm pretty confident that the answer is yes, but I didn't want to just state it as a fact. I thought it would be a lot more fun to create some audio samples of different guitars, one of them having the true temperament frets, and to see if the average person could pick those out could pick out which guitar is the true temperament neck. So what I'm going to play for you now is four audio samples. I recorded one on my Gibson, um, Howard Roberts. One was recorded on my Telecaster, which has the Joe Barden saddles on it. One was recorded on my uh, Mayonez Hydra. And one was recorded on my Regis with the true temperament neck. So what you're really listening for here is not does this chord sound in tune? What I really need you to listen to on each sample is do all of the chords played by the guitar sound in tune? And when you listen like that, I think the true temperament neck will jump out. You'll instantly see, oh wow, everything seems to be in tune with this one. Uh, really interesting test. I'm not going to give you any spoilers. Listen to them for yourself and see if you can work out which one is the true temperament neck. So that was pretty interesting, right? Now, before I give you the answers, what I'm going to do is just tell you a little bit more about 
tuning on the guitar and why true temperament does make such a difference so this may come as a revelation to many of you but the tuning of the guitar is not perfect we work within a tempered system our octave is split up equally and in reality notes aren't really spaced perfectly equal what you find is that we really have a compromise so we can play in all 12 keys every key is a little bit out of tune just a little bit you find that your thirds will be a little bit out of tune but if you correct that and tune your thirds so your thirds are correct then your fifths start to be out uh, very complicated you can do a lot of reading on this as a subject and it's an interesting subject but needless to say the guitar is not perfect in fact very few instruments are perfect perfect but true temperament seeks to fix that so really the test here, what I did here was I tuned each of the guitars using a strobe tuner and tuned them as accurately, accurately as I could to the open strings. And then what you'll find is everything is just a little bit out of tune. Now to really highlight this a little bit further, on the Gibson I didn't actually do that. I didn't tune the open strings. I actually played an E chord and tuned each one of the notes in the E chord. So it was perfectly in tune. So what you find with that is that the E chord is wonderful, absolutely wonderful. And then as soon as you play a C chord, you can very audibly hear that the uh, G, the open G string, is flat, it's very flat. In fact, I've got a little clip of that. Let me just cut that in so you can see that. That sounds like this. Here's a lovely E chord, I've tuned this. Sounds great. Now play C. That's really out. How about a D? Sounds dreadful, but that E, perfect. So when someone first demonstrated that to me, it was a bit of a revelation and something that you just sort of learn to live with. But when the opportunity arose to get a true temperament neck, I was really interested in, in seeing just how much better it was. And I'm very happy with how different it was. So the answers are, number one was my Telecaster. Number one is the Telecaster. Now that has the Barden pickups in, sorry, the Barden uh, compensated saddles and the bridge, which helps with the intonation a little bit. As many people know, it's very difficult to intonate a Telecaster very accurately. So that one does a, a bit of a better job. Clip number two was the Mayonnaise Hydra. That's my headless guitar. Now, to me, this one was the most out. And the only reason it was kind of the most out is because it's very difficult to, to tune incredibly accurately with the uh, tuners that are at the back of the guitar compared to how accurate you can be with a wrist motion up here on the, on the headstock of a guitar. So... You know, if I sat with that one for a bit longer, I might have been able to get it a little bit better. But yeah, that one kind of stood out like a sore thumb. Number three was the True Temperament Neck. And in the polls that I've done so far, most people have managed to pick out number three as being the True Temperament Neck. And here's an interesting thing with the True Temperament Neck. It's not actually perfect in this clip. I actually have mine tuned to CGC FAD. So that actually presented quite a problem because it would have been a dead giveaway if I played these clips and the the you know the true temperament guitar was a tone lower than all of the rest. So actually what I did with this was I recorded it and then I pitch shifted it up a tone in my recording software. So um you know does it can you it does it stand out because of that? I don't know. To me it just sounds like it's in tune, which uh, is the point, right? And then finally, the fourth clip was the Gibson. I think when you listen to that and you hear the open strings, they sound not quite in tune. And then you hear that E chord and it's, oh, this is nice. And then finally, you have the, uh, the next chord, the C, and then moving around. And all of those chords are wildly out of tune compared to the uh, the open E chord. So there we go. What do you guys think? Um, to me, something like that is a very interesting test, and I want it to be as scientific as possible with this. <laughs> Hopefully, I've not put you in a position where you've gone out and suddenly you hate your guitars. It's very much the nature of the beast. This is the way our guitars always have been, always will be. It's something that we are very used to. So don't let it drive you insane. Just know that there are options out there. If you want to have your thirds and fifths perfectly in tune, the beauty of that guitar is actually I can play 
major chords and minor chords with a bit of overdrive and distortion and they don't actually sound too bad they sound quite pleasing on that guitar compared to playing on any of my other guitars as soon as you start introducing those thirds in with a bit of overdrive the dissonance really starts to pop out so yeah anyway finally i just want to say a huge thank you to my supporters over on patreon.com these guys are a huge help in bringing this stuff to you uh, lots of work to be getting on with but because these guys help support the channel it means i can take some time out of transcribing and doing all the things i'm doing to make an interesting video like this so Honestly, guys, bottom of my heart, thank you very much. And I hope everyone out there in YouTube land appreciates you. <laughs> if you would like to be like those awesome people, you can check us out on Patreon by clicking this button up here. It gets you lots of cool stuff in return. You can subscribe by clicking this button down here. And you'll see two more of my videos here and here. As always, thank you so much for the support, guys. And if you have any questions about this, hit me up in the comments below. Peace.